Well, um, when in, in 993, when we started Anima Mundi, it was like uh, we were uh, taking advantage of a law that was created in Brazil that uh, any big company, industries, they could like uh, use uh, tax money to invest in art and in sports. And uh, we were associated to a, a cultural center that received those money. And it was interesting because we, we are four directors and we've been together until today. So we are the founders and still the directors. And at that time, we were animators and um, um, we, we met doing courses of animation with, with a agreement between National Film Board, Canada, Government of Canada and, and Brazil. And that's how we met. We are like internship, like artists in residence in Brazil. So I left Brazil. I went uh, to CalArts in California. And I came back, and the country was really, really destroyed in a sense economically because our president, Fernando Collor, with we took him out of power, he had like a to, he had like take all the investments, all the, the savings from everybody. And uh, it was like a really mess. There was nothing going on. Nobody had works. It was really, really bad. But there was this uh, law with the cultural centers. So we went there and said, we knock at the door. We are four animators. We want to start like a film festival. And the idea was like, OK, there's no industry. So let's create something so we can make our films <laughs> and show somewhere. And um, it was so interesting when we were in this internship with the National Film Board. It's like uh, we were seeing a lot of films. And we realized that when you watch a lot of films, you learn a lot. And that, that was kind of like our school, in a sense. So we, we decided to do the event. And uh, it started like four days. and. It, it was already like a big event, like the press was there. It was full of people. So we uh, immediately, the, the cultural center said, yes, we want to continue. And we wanted to do one week next year. So it actually grew slowly. And uh, in the first year of the event, we did a retrospective in Brazilian animation. And we, there were about like 10 films. The second year, there was nothing. And the third year, there was like four or five films. And then it started growing every year, like more and more and more. So um, a lot of people start like producing films. And eventually, like the fact that the computer became like something easy that somebody had a camera and a computer also helped a lot like the production in the independent production and uh, also since the first anima mundi we had workshops and we had like uh, we call open studios which were studios that teach animation technique like in the lobby of the festival and everybody that would pass through could play with it and understand how animation work and so a lot of the animators we have now, actually, they started there. They were like uh, curious and passing through. And they said, whoa, I want to do this in my life. I want to become an animator. So yeah, the industry grew. I think it was because of the event of Anima Mundi also being like a um, platform for meetings of animation. Also because the, there was a boom in animation worldwide. And also because of the event of the computers that was helping people to produce their work at home. And in terms of schools, there was not many schools. That was, I mean, there was not a school ever dedicated to animation. But there was a little course here and there. And it's still like that, but much more and uh, more professional courses. But uh, we still need like a, a, a graduation degree in animation You know that we don't have. A, only one school in Minas does that. But so a lot of the animators start like doing um, commercials work with in companies doing commercials and then that's where like their major school and some people also left the country and came back or and that's how the industry started building but animation became uh, uh, anima mundi became a reference for animation in latin america also so it's that's like the brief story of anima mundi and the the fact that it grew it was not like we didn't plan that it was something that happened 
every year, like more people came and there was more films coming. And so slowly we had to adapt to all this. And people were complaining, oh, I can't I'm come here and I cannot get into the screening. So we had to make more venues. And in a way, it's really interesting because it shows like the appreciation from the Brazilian to the animation, which is fantastic. So it's a two ways thing. Like we we're putting out animation and people were like asking more. And that's how it became so big like it is today. You know, I was really impressed to be here. I, I seen the programs are so well taught and uh, especially like the the competition there is the selection is really really interesting you know i it's good to me like to be able to sit and see a group of films you know from the central europe you know and uh, and it's been really good it's a really good collection you know i never you know, had the, that experience before. So I like the festival, I like the programming. I think uh, Igor is doing a great job, you know, and has uh, film and literature. It's always like something very well thought. So it's one of the best organized festival I've been for a while, you know. And um, i rather come to events like this than to bigger events where animators are not being considered you know much and their films are not it's just part of one thing so this place looks like that uh, there's a big a lot of respect for animation and for their authors that's how i feel here i like it very much thank you very much thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.